see here. Yeah, so I gotta take this off. I gotta get new bearings for these. All right, the only uh, thing I destroyed during that removal process, other than this seal, was this uh, washer that is right behind it. It's actually butted up against here. You can see the uh, holes. Um, I had to because I could not get that out, and the screw wouldn't grab on it until it went through all the way. And I couldn't head it out with the hammer. It was just like bouncing off of it, so it wouldn't actually push out. Uh, but anyway, uh, just a washer. Um, it does have to be flat. Uh, but I'm just going to weld this hole up and um, bash it flat. So let's go do that. All right, just got this repaired, this washer. It's all back to, uh, let's just call it good enough. I mean, here, here's a, a flat surface and I'll spin this around. You can see it, that's, that's close enough. This is just a washer. Okay. Now, uh, the new bearing set. Uh, I just bought the entire uh, bearing and race. It was, uh, it's the LM501310 is the race, and the bearing is LM501349. This is from Timken, that's the number. Uh, I don't know if the race is gonna fit, I'm gonna find out now. It was like the same price, so I just got it. Read the number on it. Yep, LM501310. So it is the same exact. So there you go. Uh, for, for that specific one, this is the set you need. If you use the old race to pop something, another bearing in, make sure you don't go in too deep and you get this stuck in there. Well, alright, now you start tapping the edges. That's it. Yep. That's it. That's it. All right. All right. I'll clean out no more grits. Drop them in. And it's not tall enough. <laughs> Yeah. 
that side. Probably the door. Oh, that's actually kind of snug in there. All right, here's the new seals. These were, uh, I think, like $12. Now, there's differences. Uh, this is a, a metal outer casing. And uh, this has the uh, silicone or whatever material it is on the, all around it. And it has a lip seal or a dust seal. And this one does not. Um, I don't think it should matter. I don't know. The dust seal probably just won't be necessary. But uh, all the dimensions are the same. So I'm going to use it. Got that in. Um, looks pretty good. There we go. There we go. Let's sit there for a second. Oh, that is so much better. I wonder if they just didn't seat these bearings on all the way. Because this is, there is, I'd have to, like, there's, there's no play now. That's awesome. There we go. A couple taps. All right, this bearing is also the LM10 349. <clears throat> All right, here's the gear that I forgot to put on, if you noticed. Uh, I would have had to taken it back out anyway because I had forgot that I wanted to verify the spacing that this had. Uh, and I don't even remember the movement I showed you when it was in here. It looked like it was wiggling, but it was actually just sliding up and down. And I just needed to verify that it was contacting these teeth against the teeth on here at each uh, maximum distance in either direction. And it actually is. This, this gear in here is a little bit wider. Uh, and this side, I just measured it. This side, this uh, protrusion, is uh, about two millimeters uh, higher than this side. So I'm gonna put the higher side here to push it out. Done. So much tighter. Got these all cleaned up. That Loctite was so thick, but um, I got it off. I don't have a tap to get down here, but I am able to screw this down just with my fingers. So it should be fine. Got this big old washer. 
Uh, I don't know if Loctates recommend it, but judging by how much they had on here, I imagine it might have been a problem. So I'm not going to put as much as they did, but um, definitely get some on there. There you go. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. I'll find out if that was a bad decision later. Uh, is this battery dead? Nope. Nope. I'll torque this uh, off camera. Uh, now we can pop on uh, the cover. Which I've lost. Alright. Now I'm going to put some uh, RTV on here. Just black oil resistant. There. Just a nice little layer. Now hopefully this is easier to pop in than it was to take out. Ooh. Now this is either going to be upside down, how do I tell, I think this is straight like that, like immediately oh. just go down straight the first time it's not done yet there you go voila No silicone squished out. I don't know if that's good or bad. I oh, know I see it. I see it. I see it. All right. <laughs> okay. Done. All right. For the next part, uh, we got to make new seals for this. Now I um <clears throat> I just bought uh some stock, some uh, Buna cord, and uh, this glue. Uh, most of this is all from Amazon. Uh, this is supposed to be like pretty good stuff for this. We'll find out. But it's it's a low pressure setting. I think because of the temperature, it's not. There we go. It's not exactly uh, drying as fast as it sh normally would. Just uh, press them together tightly to get instant bond, and. Yep, but there you go. Yeah, it's cold out, so you gotta hold it for a little longer. But, it's not perfect. But it's a seal, it's gonna squish. Um, now I gotta determine which side's the top. I'm gonna guess this is the top. Okay, let's get this in here. All right, so on the other side of this, uh, I need to make a new O-ring for here because the other ones were just flat. Uh, but I have to clean this retainer ring up first because it's just a little rusted and just gunky. So I'm gonna throw this on the wire wheel and uh, give it a little paint. All right, uh, so just to give an example, this is how flattened the uh, old seal was. While that piece is drying, uh, I'm going to work on making the new seals for this outer ring. 
And that's what that, uh, that metal thing does. It goes on the outside and the seal is in between it. So let's um, cut out and make a new one for this right now. Yeah, the doing everything and doing things in the winter just makes everything more difficult. I have to keep like all these supplies inside so that when I need them, they're not uh, unusable. I don't know how I missed any of this. I did. Okay. See, it's supposed to be like this. Round. This one might be a little more difficult because it might not. I don't know if it's going to conform to the shape as well. I mean, um, yeah. Oh crap, I might need the ring. Yeah, I might need the ring on here. Let me clean up the other one to use that as a template. All right. Yeah, I uh, the wire reel didn't work to clean these. Uh, it's too, it's like too thin. I had to uh, grind it all, but anyway. Here you go, hopefully that makes more sense. And then the uh, seal goes in between there. Now hopefully it's warm. I kept it in my body. Not in my body. Not in my in my jacket. Okay. There we go. Now I think the best thing to do is uh, you cut them both at the same with the same slice, and I think that should give you a, a better cut. So I'm gonna mark this. Wow, these are much harder to cut through. Oh, that looks terrible. All right, we're going. Alright, I'm gonna heat it up. Ah. razors don't take too much heat because they're so thin, but. Woo! I feel it. I feel it. Ow! <laughs> Use my razor blade pliers. You gotta put a whole bunch of pressure on it. And it's like about 30 degrees out right now, so I'm gonna hold it for a little extra. Oh, not yet. Uh, this is, I think, just for like water. It doesn't get in the case. There we go. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, so I, I, I would suggest getting some kind of a special kind of scissors or shears to cut that seal. You do want it to be as flush as possible. Okay, that's ready. Let's get this on. I'm gonna put the seam in the center point. There go. I just feel like this has the most room for it to uh, sit comfortably. Let me get the ring. All right, here's our retaining ring. There we go. All right, I'm gonna put silicone, uh, a, light, a light thing of silicone on this mating surface area, and then we're gonna bolt it back up to the machine.
All right, I got a silicone on this, seal's ready, the uh, retaining ring's on. I got all the bolts cleaned up, so uh, now we can go mount this to the side of the machine. That one's on. I'll do a final torque after the uh, silicone has like some time to dry. Then I'll do a full compress on it. It's pretty tight right now, just keeping it in position. Um, so this side's on. Now I gotta work on doing the same thing I did to this with the uh, new seals and uh, the new bearings. And then I'll be putting that side on. So let's work on the other one.
All right, next part, we gotta put chains on here. Uh, now, instead of having to pull and separate these gear cases apart to put the chain in between here, uh, I'm gonna add master links to uh, all four of these. And I got new chain, so I'm also gonna be making all, new, all four new chain sets for this. So let's do that and put them on. I just measured these. Uh, it's a, you need two six foot lengths and two four foots. Uh, the shorter ones, I believe these are rear chains. These are almost exactly four feet in length. One, let's do the rest. All right, got all them in now. Uh, I'm gonna work on uh, cleaning up the covers that go over this. There they are, not too bad. No, oh, that one is. No, they're bad. They're bad. All right, let's get working on these. Now that all four chains have been replaced with brand new ones, all master length now, so that um, it's a little, a little easier. Uh, I'm glad I did do that because I actually had some, not like an issue, but I had to take both gear cases back off just to, uh, not off, just had to loosen it so I can adjust. This is the adjustment, uh, the position of the gear case. So if this is a little bit further back that way, it'll make it tighter on this chain but it'll make it looser on this chain so i had to find the center point i thought i for some reason i thought this uh plastic guide was some form of uh tensioning but it's not so um if you're doing that just remember uh find your center first before you torque everything down all right to tighten these uh axle bolts down properly you need uh, a lot of torque so i found this uh generous size of angle iron. Uh, I just popped out two studs that I just put back in. Uh, I uh, marked from the back with a scribe for the holes and I'm going to cut out a little section here just so it can sit more flush against that. But this is going to be my uh, my lever and it's going to use the uh, giant socket wrench, lock it inside and then crank down on this. All right let's go see how this turns out. Now, 
now, uh, I gotta attach our giant bar to the studs. Okay, we got all those uh, axle studs locked tighted in and uh, torqued to um, however heavy I am on a three foot lever. Uh, I got a couple, uh, well, I just got one for it, but just the magnet to drop in the bottom of here. Okay, now I'm just gonna silicone it down just because of a vibr, just to help with vibrations. Don't know if it matters, but um, Hey, I did it, you know? Yeah. You just do whatever you want, you know? All right, that's always sticky. I'm going for straight in the middle. On this side. There you go. All right, um... Whenever we open this back up after I start driving it, I'll do a check on that. All right, next step, uh, I gotta clean all these bolts up, get them ready for paint and to put them on here clean. that's it for the chain case uh thank you everyone for watching i hope you're enjoying the videos and uh if you're not already subscribed please jump on the jump on the team uh but i will see you all on the next episode